start. Good evening, Claudia. Good evening, hey. George. Welcome to my stand-up comedy. Should I say sit-down comedy? <laughs> These are the kind sponsors, Claudia and George. With a nice close-up angle at that. They are my excellent teachers for stand-up comedy. And tonight I'll demonstrate how good teachers they are. <laughs> and all of you who want to join this group, it's highly recommended that you join. So those of you who know me, my name is Al Janis. I work here in Townsville. But uh, thanks to the recent elections, um, I might move the city to another city by April. So I'm going to miss all of you, but I want to go out in the bank. And tonight, we're going to take a trip back in time to the 1990s. Now, how old were you in the 1990s, uh, George? What was your old? Oh God, my 20s. In your 20s. What about you, Claudia? 20s. How old were you? Yeah, I 90s. was uh, nine. <coughs> nine. I think I was 13. Come on. All oh, right. Yeah. Come on. I was only a kid. <laughs> yeah, George. I was um 13. Yeah. Very good. And what do you think was the biggest invention that all of you found in the 90s? Ah, the Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Walkman. That was so cool. The Walkman, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes. What about um, uh, the internet? Yes, the internet. Oh, yeah. I couldn't get a hold of the internet. Yeah, well, the internet was you... definitely. <laughs> yes, uh, the thing about the internet was it was invented in 1989 as a way to fight the Cold War between the Americans and the Soviets. Mm. So it, uh, when it was invented, it was very masculine. Mm. But uh, after the Cold War got over, the Americans didn't have an enemy anymore. So then it became very feminine. So actually, women are using the internet more than men nowadays. Mm. Just a side note. <laughs> but thanks to the internet, we needed computers. And thanks to computers, one of the big inventions of the 1990s was that it was a year of science. In the beginning of the 90s, you had a movie called Terminator 2, where you had, uh, for the first time, special effects ever used in a movie. And towards the end of the 1990s, you had a movie called Star Wars The Phantom Menace, where you actually had animated characters in the movies. So that's how things changed. This slide illustrates how things can change between the 90s and now. Do you recognize the guy on the left? The little fella? Um, uh, no, the... Uh, the old man? Yes. No. Yes, that is precisely it. That's, that's, that was a trick question. You can't recognize them. Yeah. Because that's Macaulay Culkin today. Macaulay Culkin was taking drugs. And that's what he's turned into today. Oh, okay, yeah. That is a photo of him with the movie on the extreme left. That's a photo of Macaulay Culkin today in 2014. And that's a photo of the old man character in the movie. So as you can see, He's making every effort to resemble the old man character in the movie. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Looks like... What else do you remember from the 90s? Do you remember these guys? Or can you barely recognize them? I'll forgive you if you can barely recognize them. Honestly. Because <laughs> this photo was taken in 2013. This photo was taken in Los Angeles by one of the British reporters for the Daily Mail. This photo is actually of the three male leads in the sitcom Friends of the 90s. And do you not think they have changed greatly from the 90s compared to 2013? I think they have. They have become overweight, they, have, they find difficulty to get jobs, they have lost their spouses, they are broke, they just can't get movie roles. How did that happen in just two decades? It's unbelievable. But can you actually recognize the three of them? Can you recognize Joey among the three of them? Um, I don't know their names, but I do know I have seen them before. Exactly. Yeah. What a difference just two decades make. Mm. Do you remember this movie? Yes. From 1994? Yes. Remember Dumb and Dumb? Dumb and yes. Dumb, yes. Now, most of you know that I've done the Tri Nation store. By that I mean I'm not a rugby player. By that I mean I have worked in Britain, New Zealand, and Australia. So that's called a Tri Nation store. Before I finally ended up here. So, this movie is such a dumb movie <laughs> that uh, I got to see the sequel of the movie when I moved to New Zealand between 2007 and 2009. Because every single day spent in New Zealand was like a sequel of Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Watching the locals was like Dumb and Dumber. It was so Dumb and Dumber that I felt traumatized that I finally moved to this lovely, gorgeous country. 
Yeah. You remember this movie from 1996? Yeah. Independence Day. Independence Day, yeah. Now I'll ask you to remember something. Oh, yeah. My favorite actress of the 90s acted in this movie. And I'll come at this question right at the end. Right at the end of the presentation. Who my favorite actress is for all of you to take a guess. Anyway, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Hollywood stereotypes. So, when you watch a movie like this, you always feel that the US is the favorite destination for extraterrestrials. <laughs> yeah. How's, oh, yeah. How is that we don't see extraterrestrials landing in Australia? <laughs> How is that we don't see extraterrestrials landing in Townsville? Unless, of course, New Zealand migrants come here <laughs> to work. <laughs> Now, do you remember this movie? Now, all of you know I like James Bond. And those who know me well know that I sometimes feel frustrated that I don't match up to his extremely high standards. <laughs> and no discussion of mine is complete without mentioning the great James Bond. But it often amazes me how they actually have time to make love in between battle scenes and in between shootings and guns. So this is again Hollywood stereotypes of the 90s. Has anything changed? Yeah. I'll come to that very soon. <laughs> Do you remember these movies from the 90s? Remember Jackie Chan? What yeah. Yeah. Now that's a 2008 movie, Slumdog Millionaire, but I think oh, yeah. just go to show Hollywood stereotypes. If, yes. uh, that's, the, the, that's Anna, the Russian spy who was caught in America. Um, so Russians are always spies in Hollywood. Indians are always poor. <laughs> Chinese are always great karate experts. <laughs> That's Hollywood stereotypes. Mm. Yes. Has anything changed in the last 10 or 20 years? Um, not really. Probably not really, no. Mm. Where are you from, George? Brazil. All <laughs> right. <laughs> How do they portray Brazilians in... Uh, Soft and Samba. Exactly, Samba. Yeah. Stereotype. What about you, Claudia? Yeah, from Brazil as well. You're also from Brazil. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say about the stereotypes. But because of these advances in science in the 90s, the VHS died. And because the VHS died, we started getting CD ROMs. Do you think that's a good development at all? Um, it has its good and bad. Do you still miss the VHS? Yeah. <laughs> Do you still have a, a favorite VHS stuck in the corner? Yes. <laughs> which is the one you've got, Claudia? Which is the one? I have. Um... Oh, I have all my daughters um, when they were little. Oh, <laughs> still on there. <laughs> yeah, I got a few of those. What else changed? Yes, um, when I was studying all my postgraduate exams in the last decade, I noticed that um, it was a death of books. That I was spending a lot of time in front of the computer. That I was doing multiple choice questions and watching uh, lectures of professors speaking over the internet and that uh, I can safely now say that there used to be a time when there used to be something called books at one stage mm. and that's another thing which we have left behind in the 90s. Mm. Do you all still read books? Yes. Yeah. Good. That means you're still, <laughs> you're from the 90s. Yeah, we are. We're totally 90s. They used to call it the roaring 90s. Then there's another phenomenon which has developed and which is getting worse, it's called the man drought. But again, it can be traced back to the 90s. You remember this movie? There's something about Mary? Yes. Look at those three guys. Absolute wimps. <laughs> look at their clothes, look at their hair, look at their posture. Everything wrong about it. So, the man drought can actually be traced back, at least 25 years back to the 90s. It's not something new, which all of you, most women are watching this video, might think it might ex exist now, but it actually was going on for at least 30 years in the past. I wouldn't want to go anywhere close to those guys, not even have coffee with them. Remember these TV shows of the 90s? Remember the Truman Show? It was a movie oh, where, yes. um, it was a movie of reality TV where they filmed Jim Carrey's life from birth till his adulthood without telling him and they made that as a movie mm. so it was reality TV and then as if it was time travel we have not traveled in time and we have Keeping Up With The Parishans and we have Jersey Show which is 
just an extension of what was first invented in the 90s, reality TV. So the moral of the story is uh, evolution is occurring right before your eyes. But I must say, whenever I say, I never watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians because the tigress in the picture looks more human like and has more human characteristics as opposed to the animals who are so called human beings in that picture. Mm. That's right. Oh, yeah. Remember this? Movies, movies, yes. movies? How many of you had a crush on Sarah Michelle Geller? <laughs> I know I did. Sarah Michelle Gellar played that beautiful role of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But the trouble yep. with that is she didn't try hard enough. She didn't kill too many vampires. <laughs> because uh, by the 2000s we had... Um, we had a TV show all about vampires. Can you name that TV show, George? Can you name it? It starts with a T. T-W-I-L-I-G-H-T. Twilight. Okay. Twilight series, novels and movies. So she didn't try hard enough. <laughs> this is super. Remember Anna Konnikova of the 90s? Yes. And now we have the latest Australian Open champion, Maria Sharapova. Mm. And you might have thought it's Russia then and it's Russia now, but you probably may not be right because it was America in between. It was the Williams sisters. Yes. The start and the finish oh, yes. of the era. Mm. Uh -huh. Remember this? Mm. Your first ever mobile phone? Yeah. When did you first buy yours, George? Uh, yes, yes, going back to the 90s. Yeah, 90s. Do you ever remember, Claudia, when you got your first phone that you would live with it till the end of your life with that one phone? Yes, that's what I thought. Did it was like a brick. Mm. It was like a brick. It was so big. And we needed a bag for it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a nice bag just for the phone. <laughs> well, that's what's changed in the 2000s. We now have iPhones. Mm. Um, my iPhone carries so much of data in it, so much of data. Yeah. You, it is. Um, it's well worth even. It's, it's got so much of data in it that I almost think sometimes it's like the second brain. Yes. Mm. All the computer passwords and all that are stored in it. So many passwords you need for patients' blood results and for X-rays and for the social network websites. That uh, it's almost like a second brain. Bank accounts even. But don't steal my phone just because I said bank accounts. <laughs> Remember this? These problems in the 90s? Did you ever have these problems, George, growing up? When you were trying to call Claudia, you were afraid her father would pick up the phone. Remember that? Dad will answer the phone. Uh, because we didn't have uh, mobile phones in the mid-90s. Yes. Remember that? I remember that. I remember the anxiety. <laughs> I remember my parents used to have two phones. One in their room and one on the ground floor. And oh, yes. sometimes they would listen to what I speak on the ground floor through the phone upstairs. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> so I'm extremely happy that mobile phones got invented because now I can text away and email away and YouTube away and Twitter away and Instagram away and you know what. And no one knows. Do you remember this? Remember this man? Yes. From the 90s? Man of the Bill 90s? Clinton. Um, did you ever get the feeling that you bought a new computer and one month later a new model comes out and you had to get rid of it? Mm. Did you ever get yes. that feeling? Mm. Yeah. So you can feel, you can imagine how Bill Clinton was feeling right now. But I know you didn't listen to a word I said. That all of you were trying to read the screen of what he was trying to write to Monica Lewinsky right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just move on from him. But he was an interesting <laughs> character. Do you remember www.everythinginthevorld.com? Yes. Everything had to have a www.com. Mm. Do you remember yes. that? Mm. Um, I remember watching a cricket match and at the bottom there was KFC.com on the stadium, on the floor, printed on the grass. Everything had to be a dot .com. Yeah. So, uh, George, as an engineer, you use your tools. So it will be tools.com or it will be earthmoving.com. Remember that big movie, Jurassic Park at the bottom? Mm -hmm. The great movie? Yes. So Budweiser did very well. They took those reptiles and they made the most out of the movie and made it Budweiser.com. <laughs> Remember the Wonderbra when it first came out? We had Wonderbra.com. I never tried one. <laughs> really? You crazy. missed out, George. <laughs> Remember these? Credit cards. 
way you would use to pay for things you buy on the internet using credit cards? Well, I was a bit young, so I didn't have... <laughs> a bit too young to buy it. <laughs> Did you ever feel fear when you first used it? Like, oh my goodness, yes. I'm going to get robbed. Mm -hmm. Yes, I bought my first thing only in the 2000s because I was a bit fearful of losing all my money because I didn't have much back then. Mm. <laughs> Do you remember this problem? Did you all have this problem in the 90s? Both of you were kids, you were on your computer and your parents would yell, get off the internet, I need to use the phone. Do you remember that? Yes, ah. yes, yes. Yeah, it was a dial up. Oh yeah, vaguely. Yeah, vaguely. Brings back all those warm, fuzzy feelings from the nineties. And if you're in the internet and the phone rang, you'd lose the internet. Oh yeah. yeah. Remember Kirsty Alley, the comedian from the nineties? Oh yes, yes, she's great. She hasn't changed at all, hasn't she? Her body no. mass index is still the same. This is taken from the present day, twenty years apart. She still looks great though. Yeah. Wait a minute, let me just focus. Um, yep. Yep. Wow, she looks amazing. She does. That's what plastic surgery and uh, <laughs> Botox yeah. does to you. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually make a lot of money doing Botox injections in Townsville. Um, you can actually take a course in Adelaide for two days. That's for me. I can actually do it if I wanted to. But I just feel it's a little bit out of my league, so to say. But I'm very happy with whatever I'm doing in diabetes and probably will not do Botox. There's so many better things to do in life, like mixing with you lovely people. <laughs> Money is not everything you like, you know. Remember this song by Aqua? Oh, I'm a Barminga. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful you adaptation. Remember? <laughs> it was very educational because it taught me when women say no and then they say no again and then they say no 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 and then they say no. Finally, they'll say yes. Persistence is the key. I actually learned that in the 90s from this song. But it's got to be gentlemanly persuasion. Remember these guys? Or these gals, should I say? Spice Girls. Yeah, Spice Girls? Remember music? Which is a favorite song, Claudia? Um... Ah, oh, what's the Spice Girls' favorite song? I don't know. I didn't like them, actually. Is it, is it now Blue It is! <laughs> wow, let's take a hair. look. But they're sticking from 20 years ago. That's their peak in 1996. Oh yeah, she's so young there. Wow. So an old British group that still maintain friendly relationships with each other, that still sing occasionally. Um, because I went to Britain first up, um, it had a lot of importance to me to learn the British way of speaking and British culture. This was uh, not quite the best role model, but it was at least something which I had in the 90s. <laughs> How do you know when, um, when lightning strikes, why do Spice Girls laugh and, and smile when lightning strikes? <laughs> because I think it's their picture being taken. <laughs> If you crack a joke on Tuesday, a Spice Girl will only laugh on Friday. <laughs> Why did a Spice Girl lose 10 kilograms in weight in the last one month? Because she's getting married tomorrow. <laughs> that was a bad joke I cracked in Logan in 2010 that got me into trouble. And finally, finally about the Spice Girls, uh, now that I've said a few things about them, what if they threw me a grenade? You think I'd blow up if they threw me a grenade? I wouldn't, because I don't know that you should take the pin out. Ooh. So we're all safe, it's love all. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Internet security. All oh, right, that's another something new which we didn't have in the 90s. <laughs> what an inconvenience of the 2000s. <laughs> How I hate the 21st century. <laughs> now, the love scenes. Staring directly at a woman's face is completely wrong, which is why I think this movie will be a complete flop. Fifty Shades of Grey. Flop. Flop square. Flop cube. Everything wrong about that movie is in that movie. Whereas if you go back to the 90s, if you really want to learn about love, go back to the 90s. We had a beautiful movie at the start of it. It was Robin Hood and Prince of Thieves. And that was a great Kevin Costner, one of the best actors in the 90s. Mm. And then in 1998, we had an awesome movie. How many of you can remember Titanic? Yes. Mm. We have friendly, good, good memories of Titanic, the two of you. Yes. Did you actually take her out to watch Titanic when it first came out? No. <laughs> it's a great idea for a Friday night to take her out and relive the 90s. I think we had kids then, so yeah. we're... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you were, we were changing nappies. Yes. <laughs> changing nappies. 
Do you remember these guys? These are icons of the 90s. Big Tempest, there's um, what's his name? Big Server. Absolute, Goran Ivanesov? Yeah. What did he once say? He said when my parents were making me, they must have been watching a horror movie. Oh, really? He once said that in the interview. Goran would sometimes shave his head completely bald. Goran would reach finals of tournaments and play so well, but lose in the finals. But along came the year 1999. Goran Ivanisovic goes for Wimbledon and he was a wild card. That means he wasn't the first front runner. Pete Sampras and all the other front runners. But surprise, surprise, he wins it. So he at least won one tournament in his life, but he was a, someone who always stumbled in the finals. He was from the Czech Republic. Yeah. Remember this movie? Men in Black? Yeah. Yes. About extraterrestrials? I love this song. <laughs> <laughs> remember Tommy Lee Jones? Remember Bill Smith? Remember Pete Sampras winning all those Wimbledon titles? One after the other, one after the other? Yeah. Which was the only Wimbledon he did not win in the 90s? 1996. Well, there's a story about that. It's one of my favorite uh, characters won it in this place in 96. I'll come to that very soon. And then, um, Yes, uh, there was Wenger Boys. Remember Wenger Boys? Those of you who grew up in Europe might remember Wenger Boys. They're from the Netherlands. Remember that song, Boom 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 Boom? Exactly, you got it. Beautiful song. Fantastic song. I love that song. It's very deep. Very and profound. <laughs> now, the 90s Very for cool. me. For me, what I really liked about the 90s was uh, it gave me a competitive edge. It allowed me to look at role models using satellite TV. And using the role models I built myself. So, some of my big influences of the 90s um, Australian cricket captain Steve Waugh was a huge influence. His mental toughness was a huge influence. And he played a lot of cricket in the 90s. And I watched every single match, and I watched every single minute, and I modeled myself on him. There was a great movie star called Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's now not a movie star as much, but again, his real life story, growing up in Austria, and coming up in life, and moving to America was another huge inspiration. Then there was Glenn McGrath, another massive inspiration, Australian cricketer, growing up in New South Wales, in the rural area, making it to the cricket team, becoming, ending up as the greatest fast bowler in cricket history. And then we also have uh, Shane Warren, a typical Aussie kid growing up in the streets of Melbourne, meandering along his life, going to the beach, having a paddle, having a surf, ends up being the greatest spin bowler in cricket history. And these are the people of the 90s whom I built myself on. But then there were dangers in the 90s. In the 90s we had high school finals to pass and we didn't have the best teachers back then. And to enter medical school in 1996, we had to do very competitive exams with over 40,000 people competing for 2,000 places. So how do you win from a situation like that? So I turned back to these four heroes and I did exactly what they did in the sporting field and in real life in my studies, academically. And so that's why the years 1993 to 96 were pivotal in my development. So pivotal that I refer to it as little boy. And even today, when I face a problem, always go back in time to 93 to 96 and I ask what would little boy do that's me 93 96 what did little boy do and I often get the answer and I often go through the problem and win because of the foundation all of us laid when we were growing up in the 90s awesome years coming to the end of this talk these are the role models you can recognize Schwarzenegger on the right Steve Waugh in the middle Great captain, extremely mentally tough, that's where I got my mental toughness from. And Shane Warne, very adventurous, very, very good bowler, very flamboyant. Remember these sporting moments from the 90s? Australia winning the Rugby World Cup in 1999 and winning the Cricket World Cup. This is the famous moment from that 1999 semi final when Australia tied the game with South Africa and got, Australia got through to the finals on a technicality. It's considered the best one-day cricket game ever played in cricket history. Remember Pete Sampras? He's not in this picture. Remember this moment from 1995? West Indies were unbeaten for 20 years, but they were starting to get a bit slack by the early 90s, starting to slip up. And 1995, Australia beats West Indies in the West Indies. I was watching it as a kid. And that's the great Steve Waugh. All his mental toughness, 
staring into the eyes of fast bowler Kurtley Ambrose. He's seven foot tall, Kurtley Ambrose. Staring at his face, hurling insults. They're about to lose the series, West Indies. Serves them right for not playing well for the last few years. And Australia is about to beat them. You can see Steve was staring right at the enemy. Great moment. That's some of the very famous cricket photograph. Steve Waugh and Kurtley Ambrose. And you can also see the 1999 Australian team winning the World Cup. In England, that was another great moment for me. Let's hear it a little bit about the ladies. Can you recognize all these women in the pictures, George, or are you scared in front of Claudia? <laughs> you want me to say that? Um, they watch. Yes. Um, that's about it. Excellent. You've done the right thing. You didn't want to get your wife too jealous. So let me identify them for you. That's that's Pamela Lee Anderson, who acted in Baywatch. That's Jennifer Aniston, who acted in Friends, and is a very successful actress even to this day. That's Meg Ryan. Yep. That's uh, Courtney Cox Arquette. That's Christina Appleton. That's Britney Spears, bottom right. That's Martina Hingis. That's Victoria Silvestet. And that's Renee Rosso. All sports winner actresses of the 90s. All of whom I actually liked. All of whom I got to love. But some of you know my personality quite well. And you know that um, although I, I really love all these women and I appreciate them, there's always one standout. There's always one who stands out who captures my attention. And I just can't live a single day without thinking about them. And who do you think that woman was in the 90s? Whom I just could not get her out of my head. And the clue to that is that movie which I showed you right at the beginning, Independence Day. She acted in Independence Day. Little is known about her. She's not as famous as these, or not as uh, celebrated as this lot. Maybe she keeps a low profile. She has a good career, just like you, Claudia. Every morning she wears a suit. She keeps a low profile. There's no gossip. She's got a nice husband. She's got kids. That's the type of one I like. Very intelligent, very smart. You may not have heard of Margaret Collins, but Margaret Collins was actually my favorite. And I'll give her the title of Woman of the 90s, at least for me. There was also another sitcom, it was a TV series called Now and Again, also starring John Goodman and Margaret Collin acted in that sitcom as well. Very good smile she's got. And a great personality to match. So George, which was your favourite movie of the 90s? Favourite movie in the 90s? Finding Nemo was in the... <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Claudia? Which was your favorite movie? Uh, what's my favorite? Um, uh, Back to the Future. I love that movie. That was in the 80s. That was in the 80s, but it was <laughs> late 80s. But <laughs> well, there's a catch to it. There's a little bit of a catch to it. just squeezed into the 90s. There's a little bit of a catch to it, Back to the Future. Um, they predicted what 2015 would look, out, look like in the 1989 movie. And they almost got it right. Yeah. Thanks for the future. What else? Uh, yeah, they predicted 2015. Yeah, yeah. Because we watched it the other day. You yes. Know, TV. Do you think most of the predictions came true? <laughs> no, especially the clothes did not come true. <laughs> you do have clones nowadays. <laughs> the fashion, I mean. What was your favorite song, George? Favorite song from the 90s? Yes. Uh, boom Boom Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was mine? I had so many. Oh, I had. Um, oh, Milli Vanilli was in the 90s. Milli Vanilli. I Ice Baby. Ice Baby. Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice. Which was oh, my yeah. favorite? <laughs> Which one's yours? Brian Adams. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Brian Adams, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah. But I think Whitney Houston, the late Whitney Houston, sadly passed away in 2012. Mm. Um, that was probably my best song of all. And there is actually a YouTube video of me singing the Whitney Houston song in 2010, which you can all enjoy after watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite sitcom, George? I don't know. Oh, uh, Seinfeld. I must be familiar. Absolutely true. Seinfeld yeah. is a master comedian. Oh, yeah. He cracks a lot of jokes. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. His latest joke was about how 
airplanes, no airplane, airport security so like so airplane toilets and everything neatly packed, so neatly packed, including throwaway bins for razor blades. And then he says, who would possibly shave on a plane? So that's Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. Seinfeld at his best, master comedian. Master stand-up comedian. Yep. He is very but, funny. Uh, the one which I like was Stay Lucky. Stay Lucky, you may not have seen, it's a British um, comedy sitcom from the early 90s. That's because I was going to Britain, so I was preparing myself for the British way of life. And Fraser, later on in the 90s, I got to watch Fraser. Excellent. He's a psychiatrist, I'm a diabetes specialist, but at least we have something in common. We're both very good professionals. And um, it was probably an example of what not to do many of the times. Fraser, interestingly, had a secretary who was British in that movie. You might remember her. Which was a sporting sporting moment? Favorite sporting moment? Something from Brazil? Did Brazil win the World Cup? Not in Brazil. Oh, exactly. yes. A great moment. And played at home, may I add? Yes. Uh, what about Brazil and Italy? Oh, that yeah, that was in 94. I lived in an Italian street. That my whole street was Italian. And um, we were the only Brazilians in a whole street. So Ooh. we were fighting for our lives that day. <laughs> we were. But come we to think of so it, scared. Come <laughs> to think of it, uh, <laughs> half of England is Italian and half of Air is Italian, so there's a huge Italian presence up here in North Queensland. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And lastly, um, what I liked about all these sporting triumphs, Australia beating West Indies in West Indies 1995, Australia winning the World Cup 1999, was, and was that it always came against all the odds. And at this point, I'll discuss something which I said a few moments ago. 1996 Wimbledon. <coughs> Richard Krajek <coughs> was a migrant from Eastern Europe to emigrate to the Netherlands. And he was quite poor when he was growing up in the 80s. And he was playing tennis at that stage, which was more like slave labor. And then Richard Krajek started to show talent. And uh, someone bullied him once and he lost his confidence. But then uh, Richard Krajek did something interesting. He took a piece of paper, wrote a letter to the bully and burnt it. And all the negative energy went. And something I did uh, again in my life as well in 2010, when I wanted to dismiss all the memories of New Zealand, took a piece of paper <laughs> and wrote all the things in there and burnt it. And all the memories went and started a new life here, a happy life here. <laughs> Coming back to Richard Krajek, he goes into the 1996 tournament as a complete outsider. And uh, everyone gets beaten, including Pete Sampras, the great Pete Sampras, the only tournament he didn't win. And then Richard Tragic comes to the finals against Malavai Washington. And he wins in front of his supermodel girlfriend in the audience, Daphne. It was a magical moment for a man who came from a third world Eastern European country all the way as a bona fide Dutch citizen winning Wimbledon for the first time. A very, very emotional story, something I really enjoyed in the 90s. And uh, one of the things Richard Tragic also taught me in the 90s was uh, it's not about, uh, assume you're walking a tightrope across a waterfall and you want to get through, it's not about how flamboyant you are, it's about getting your ass across the falls. Just walk the tightrope and get your ass across the Niagara Falls. And that's what I do with most of my stuff. Whenever I do it, when I've got a mission in front of me, I just don't try to act too flamboyant, just try to get the job done. Coming to the last slide. Um, always uh, search for yourself and always to be yourself. And your inner foundations, which were laid in the 90s, are what your instincts presently fall back on. So always trust your instincts, they're always right. And sometimes it may be, you may feel a bit uncomfortable stepping out of your shell and to embrace life. But remember, to do courage and to get out of your uncomfortable, cozy life and get out of your shell and get out of your comfort zone and embrace life because life is not a prison, life is meant to be lived. Thank you very much for your audience, for your excellent attention and next week I'll return back with my run-up of the 2000s. Thank you.